Nearly three decades ago, we conducted an international workshop to compare the Northern Adriatic with the main stem of Chesapeake Bay. The workshop and subsequent publication of Ecosystems at the Land Sea Margin, Drainage Basin to Coastal Sea, were the result of a visit from a delegation from the US Department of State to Slovenia and Croatia shortly after the United States recognized their independence. As a member of the delegation, I was tasked with focusing on marine science and mariculture. After meetings with the academies of science from both countries and in collaboration with the Lanka Malay and Nainis Malaka, we decided to one, assess our current understanding of nutrient inputs and their impacts on the two ecosystems. Two, identify priorities for future research and monitoring. Three, facilitate the development of cooperative research programs and the transfer of information and technology. And four, establish closer linkages between environmental science and environmental management. The workshop led to a collaboration among scientists from Austria, Croatia, Italy, Slovenia, and the United States that published the first comparative analysis Three basic scientific questions were addressed. One, how are land use patterns reflected in the pathways and rates of nitrogen and phosphorus export from land to coastal water bodies? Two, how do the physical characteristics of those water bodies, i.e. their size, shape, and circulation regimes, influence the effects of nutrient enrichment? And to what extent can changes in fisheries be related to changes in water quality, as indicated by accumulations of particular organic matter, oxygen levels, salinity, and toxic algal events. The comparison has yielded interesting insights to these questions. At the same time, the workshop also illustrated the inadequacy of current knowledge as a foundation for understanding and predicting the effects of land use practices on coastal aquatic ecosystems and the resources they support. Increasing anthropogenic inputs of nitrogen and phosphorus and sediments to the coastal ocean via river discharge over the past hundred years are primary drivers of ecosystem degradation in many estuarine and coastal ecosystems worldwide, including Chesapeake Bay and Northern Adriatic Sea. The effect of these inputs include the annual recurrence of seasonal hypoxia, declines in water transparency, habitat loss and loss of biodiversity. In Chesapeake Bay, several bottom hypoxia and loss of submerged aquatic vegetation were first evident in the 1950s and 1960s, whereas the degradation signs in the northern Adriatic Sea were occurred since the 1970s. Uh, in both systems uh, in the uh, 80s, uh, um, regulations were applied in order to reduce uh, the nutrient loads uh, and uh, this uh, um, led to an improvement uh, of the water quality in both systems. Also, if uh, there was differences as in the <coughs> Chesapeake Bay, there was uh, mainly a reduction of uh, nitrogen, uh, whereas in the Northern Adriatic Sea of phosphorus, in particular orthophosphate which led to um, an improvement of the general water quality of the system. Anyway, still monitoring has to be carried out uh, in order to detect uh, the future uh, trends because there can be a, a legacy, um, especially regarding the uh, nutrients and uh, phosphorus stored in the sediments of the systems. We physical oceanographers have been looking at changes in the circulation of the Northern Adriatic and Chesapeake Bay associated with climate. In contrast to the ecosystem, these changes may seem subtle, but they're likely to have substantial effects. Sea level rise will increase the long wave propagation speed and freshwater inflow, which drives flows in both water bodies, is going to change. The most consequential change is in the primary driving force, the wind. We've cited decreases in the bora and increases in 
in Scirocco in the northern Adriatic. In Chesapeake Bay, we're concerned with increases in frequency and intensity of hurricanes. Clearly, these must be tracked into the future. And to that end, a conclusion of our paper is that Ming Li and I ought to travel to visit our friends in Slovenia to discuss this further. In coastal ecosystems such as Northern Adriatic Sea and the Chesapeake Bay, primary production is dominated by phytoplankton. Analysis of multidecadal time series of phytoplankton biomass production and abundance has shown that phytoplankton biomass in both systems exhibits strong spatial gradients, annual cycles and large interannual variability due to variations in freshwater discharge and nutrient loading. Phosphorus is generally considered the most important limiting nutrient for phytoplankton in northern Adriatic, whereas in the Chesapeake Bay, either phosphorus or nitrogen can limit phytoplankton growth. In both systems, nutrient loading has reduced in recent years, but a reduction in chlorophyll and productivity was observed only in northern Adriatic, while no such change were observed in the Chesapeake Bay. This was implied that oligotrophication is now underway in the northern Adriatic. Despite comparable nitrogen loads, the Chesapeake Bay is more efficient at converting nutrient inputs to phytoplankton biomass and production. Quantifying phytoplankton responses to nutrient load reductions will continue to be an important priority for future research in both systems, as will in responses to changes in climate and other stressors. Eutrophication is probably the most widespread and harmful issue facing coastal systems worldwide, and it's most commonly caused by the excess input of nutrients, largely due to human-based activities, in the coastal waters where they stimulate algal blooms or excessive proliferation of phytoplankton and other species, the depletion of oxygen in bottom waters as those blooms are respired, and the associated decline in pH or acidification due to respiration. We synthesized the most recent data on eutrophication status in both systems, and we found that system-specific characteristics make the Chesapeake Bay much more susceptible to eutrophication than the Northern Adriatic Sea. That said, both systems have exhibited numerous symptoms of eutrophication in the last several decades. The most recent data indicate that nutrient inputs have become to decline in both systems, a process we call oligotrophication, with mixed results to date. And so we recommend that future research is needed to continue following those recovery trajectories and to understand how they interact with the myriad of other stressors occurring in coastal systems, most particularly climate change. Mesozooplankton and gelatinous zooplankton are key links between primary producers and higher trophic levels, serving as mediators of energy and material flow in aquatic food webs. Over the past few decades, dramatic changes have occurred in both the mesozooplankton and gelatinous zooplankton communities in the Chesapeake Bay and in the northern Adriatic Sea. Crustacean copepods dominate the mesozooplankton community in both regions, but the diversity of gelatinous zooplankton is much higher in the northern Adriatic Sea. In the past half century, Chesapeake Bay has seen declines in the abundance of dominant copepod species and increasing abundance of some gelatinous zooplankton, all while the prevalence of low oxygen or hypoxic water has increased. In the Adriatic Sea over the past few decades, non-indigenous species of mesozooplankton and gelatinous zooplankton have been observed and in some cases have come to dominate the zooplankton communities. Because of their important and changing role in the food web, systematic and consistent monitoring programs for mesozooplankton and gelatinous zooplankton are needed to support resource managers and stakeholders to develop indices of ecosystem health, water quality, and marine resources. While invisible to naked eye, microbes play a key role in carbon and nutrient cycling and maintaining a healthy ecosystem. We synthesize current knowledge on interannual variability and secular trends in microbial ecology of the Chesapeake Bay and Northern Adriatic Sea. Abundance of cyano and heterotrophic bacteria is an order of magnitude higher in Chesapeake Bay, while productivity varies over similar ranges in both systems, suggesting higher turnover in the Northern Adriatic Sea. 
Viruses play an important role in limiting their abundance. Temperature is an important constraint in winter and spring, while nutrients and dissolved organic carbon supply in summer. Bacterial abundance has declined in the North Adriatic uh, since the turn of the century due to nutrient management and declines in riverine uh, runoff, which has not been documented in Chesapeake Bay. Projected climate-driven changes in riverine nutrients loading will likely increase this contrast in microbial ecology between both systems in future. Pelagic benthic coupling is a concept that aims to link processes happening in the water column to sediments. And for example, imagine you had high primary production in a water column, which led to deposition of organic material to sediments, some of which was remineralized, and then some of that remineralized nutrients went back to the water column to support higher primary production. These, the rates involved in this type of cycle are what we aim to compare between the Chesapeake Bay and the Northern Adriatic Sea. A highlight of our budget was that we found that phytoplankton production was much higher in Chesapeake Bay, owing to its higher nutrient rates, and therefore there is higher deposition to sediments. And importantly, the ratio of this recycling to deposition was similar. So despite big differences in the rates, the relative recycling rates were comparable. Just to summarize, our analysis was possible because we had multiple rate process measurements to synthesize in both systems. And to address the impacts of future climate change on these systems, we consider that these rate processes are essential combined with numerical simulations to improve our understanding of pelagic benthic coupling. Critical habitat that have been impacted by anthropogenic pressure in Chesapeake Bay and in the northern Adriatic Sea include seagrass bed and tidal marshes, oyster reefs and coastal lagoons, all of which support important ecological services. Major anthropogenic pressures include eutrophication, coastal development, climate change, invasive species and overfishing. These pressures are likely to persist and may become greater in the future, yet there are signs of recovery. The Chesapeake seagrass beds, for example, began a comeback in the mid-80s after decades of decline from eutrophication, mainly driven by anthropogenic nitrogen reduction. And in the northern Adriatic Sea, eutrophication in lagoons led to episodic bottom water anoxia and a shift from benthic to pelagic primary production. But following natrium reduction over the past two decades, there are signs of recovery of canopy forming algae along the eastern coastline of the sea and of seagrass beds in western lagoons. In chapter 10, the authors compare the status of Adriatic Sea and Chesapeake Bay, so far away bedding, highlighting peculiarities but also similarities about the status of fish and shellfish stocks. For example, the fisheries in both sides are heavily exploited with some overfished fluctuating in the last three decades, in particular the landings increase in the Adriatic Sea and decrease in Chesapeake Bay, but in 2016 landings were roughly equivalent between systems and estimated at about 200,000 tons per year. Other aspects affect the target species. In fact, in the Adriatic fishery exploits several small pelagic species and invertebrate fisheries involve a variety of crustaceans and mollusks. Instead, Chesapeake fisheries target only one pelagic species and invertebrate fisheries target just one crustacean and three mollusks. But both regions are best a variety of demersal species. Other similarity regard the couple benthic pelagic food web that are important ecologically in both systems and also the human impact, such as dams, coastal structure, sediment, altered river flow and diminished water quality and habitat that negatively affect the fishery species. The health of coastal ecosystems, including Northern Adriatic and Chesapeake Bay, is threatened by a vari various anthropogenic pressures, including pollution, overfishing, coastal development and loss of critical habitats, invasive species, 
climate drive and warming, sea level rise, and acceleration of the global water cycle. Synergistic effects between anthropogenic stressors should also be highlighted. For example, anthropogenic nutrient loading and warming act synergistically to amplify the spatial and temporal extent of hypoxia, while increases in hypoxia enhance climate driven acidification. Similarly, they may influence the frequency of toxic phytoplankton events and jellyfish blooms. These pressures not only impact ecosystem health, but also reduce their ability to provide ecosystem services from fisheries and resilient communities to biodiversity and carbon sequestration. It is important to note that since the publication of the first book in 1999, there have been some significant developments in environmental regulations on water quality in the two marine systems, Chesapeake Bay and Northern Adriatic. As a result of the managed reduction in anthropogenic nutrient inputs over the last three decades, eutrophication has gradually declined in both systems and habitats are showing signs of recovery. However, Achieving water quality goals remains a challenge and, in addition, advances in scientific understanding and predictability of changes in ecosystem state require sustained monitoring and modeling that support ecosystem-based management.